Yo, 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 what is going on, IK fam? B and we are back again today with another Dope Sauce Infinity Kingdom video. And we're going to be discussing, finally, without further ado, Tower of Knowledge. Now, I'm pretty excited because I definitely have been wanting to cover Tower of Knowledge for a while. I think the important thing for me, you know, before I really dive into something and give you my thoughts and my opinion, and at, and at times, advice and recommendations... I like to make sure that I have a good understanding of the material that I'm talking about. So one, I can give you good, objective, and accurate information. And then, in addition, my opinion on things. So before we dive into skills, I really want to talk about probably the biggest and the most important part about how this video is going to start and your approach as a player to Tower of Knowledge. And that is, you should not be spending soul crystals on tower of knowledge skills until all of your four composition immortals have max skilled well their only skill which is their first that is my biggest pro tip to any and all players now there is an exception what is that exception i'm sure some of you could guess it that bacon cheddar guap gouda which is money if you spend, you will obviously be able, or you should be able to do this faster than someone who is a free-to-play player. As far as getting access to additional skills, it will be easier for you because, one, if you're spending, typically you could purchase more uh, Philosopher's Stones. You, there's other ways that you can get more Soul Crystals. You could probably do the back-to-back 12-hour -back sailings all the time, along with having more consistent placings and events that will give you Soul Crystals. You could probably use more AP when it comes to the Human Rebels event as well, more so than a free-to-play would. Again, all of these things are going to be allowing you as a spender to get more Soul Crystals over a longer period of time, which means you will be able to start diving into Tower of Knowledge sooner than someone who is a free-to-play, uh, arguably maybe even a low spender. Now, for myself, who pretty much is a low spender at this point, I still have never touched and invested into a skill outside of the tutorial, because the tutorial does make you get the first two entry-level green skills at the bottom of the tree. Outside of that, I have never invested to a single Tower of Knowledge skill. Why? Because I think it's a little more important for you to max skill out all of the immortals that you're going to be ideally running for your mid slash end game comp end game comps out of the four marches that you have access to then once that is done your soul crystals will be free everything everything you accumulate from that point right is going to be a hundred percent invested in the tower of knowledge now that is my viewpoint on how i want to approach min maxing you can easily make an argument if you want to invest some, but keep in mind, right, you don't get a full percentage back of the soul crystals that you invest into the TOK skills unless you're just okay using your soul crystals and then not getting the 100% recycle like you would if you're dismantling immortal shards and then reinvesting into the market. So that's why I like to be a little bit more selective before I dive into Tower of Knowledge. So that's my number one pro tip. Now let's dive into Tower of Knowledge, right? And I'm going to talk about really just some skills starting from kind of the top down that I like as standouts. Now, I kind of break Tower of Knowledge skills up in a few ways. And also, as a side tip, for anyone that wants to look at all the Tower of Knowledge skills, you want to do some mix and matching, I have finally updated my uh, the Everything IK spreadsheet. I have a link to that in the description below. And that's the third tab on my Everything IK spreadsheet where I, de I wrote out every single skill. I broke them up into the level on the tree, uh, going across the row left to right. And then I also put in kind of my general tier ranking list off of what I used to divide it and i'm going to explain as well for some of the skills that we'll talk about here in a moment so starting with uh so we're going to go top down we're going to look at some of the epic skills and then we're also going to look at some of the elite skills so starting with some of the epic skills that i'd like as far as ones that are just universally able to be applied across the board 
right? One of those I like is Shelter, uh, which is the first one here at 40, right? It says protects all units on the same side within range with a 50% chance of restoring HP if they sustain damage. The reason I like this skill, and I put this skill actually as more of like an S-tier skill, is because, one, there's no time limit on it, right? This will always proc, ever, or it'll have a chance to proc, every single time an immortal takes damage, excuse me, the immortals take damage within range, right? It says protects all units on the same side within range. This means that it covers more than just one allied unit, which is two to three, I would estimate. And then every time those two to three units take damage, this has an opportunity to proc on the restore HP. That's why I put this up as kind of like an S tier skill, because again, there's no time limit. It affects multiple immortals, and it has at least a 50% chance or higher to proc. Another skill <laughs> we'll talk about is paralysis. Now, it says, once the battle starts, it reduces the attack speed of all enemy units by 4.5% up to 15% if you max it. Again, the reason I would even put this as an S-tier skill is because, again, there's no time limit on it. Two, it reduces attack speed of all enemy units, right? So it affects all enemy units. And then three, it reduces attack speed. Reducing attack speed means you're reducing the rate of your energy being accumulated, which is slowing down when your next skill is going to be proc'd, or even consecutive skills for that matter as well. So those are just kind of two examples I'll give you from my S tier. I'm going to give you two examples from my A tier. And again, you can look at the spreadsheet as I have uh, pretty much all the epics and the elite skills listed along with some kind of notable mentions and standouts that I like, which we'll probably cover in another video. So now the A tier, right? Let me talk about a couple that I like here from A tier, right? So one of the ones that I like is, let me see, I have to go down to, where's my level 31, I think? Okay, let's do that. Kind of defer to the spreadsheet and then go over. So uh, let's talk about Lifelink. Lifelink is one I put at A, and the reason why is because, right, there is specifically a sporadic time limit here where it says every six seconds after the battle starts it has a 50 percent chance of creating a lifelink with two enemy units they will share your received damage for six seconds right so again i i like the skill and i actually think this could be something that kind of teeters the s tier but keep in mind it's not a passive skill so to speak that is just automatically applied right it does proc every six seconds so it's not like a flat passive uh, that for me is one of the reasons why i would put this more like an a tier more so than an s tier but i could still see an argument for this even being made to an s tier for some people that might value it a little bit more right i think um, another really good one that we're going to take a look at here is what's my next one so i have one here for as I'm now looking to find it off. Okay, here we go. So level 30. So Adrenaline Rush, right? It says every normal attack has a 50% chance of gaining 60 energy. Now, I, like, I, I really like this skill. One, because it has a pretty high, it has a 50% chance of proccing. But, and, and again, you're able to gain 60 to 200 energy. That's a lot. I mean, right, the... The max, the amount of points it takes to proc a skill from what people have tested is like a thousand points, right? On top of the attack speed, your basic energy accumulation over time. And then I would imagine if you get attacked, that might factor into you getting a little bit of energy accumulation as well or energy gain. But the fact that every auto attack, right, like where it says every normal attack has a 50% chance, right? You, would, you, could put, you could put this on someone... As an example, right, and again, I'll give you a brief example here on someone that you can put that skill on, which would be, where's my boy here? Oh, God, I'm going to have to scroll down really far for this because I don't think I have him unlocked yet. Uh, here we go. So someone like Alexander is an example. Why? Because his skill is increased normal attack damage and his active is increases damage dealt and increases the attack speed up to 50%. Right? This is someone you could put on someone like Alex, and you're just constantly getting the skill proc off all the time. I mean, think about just having a higher attack, a higher attack speed. He's just eating away at the person in front of him, right? 
Uh, it's almost like a, a high uh, DPS character in like League of Legends, for example, right? High attack speed, high DPS, and you're just melting shields, right? Again, you could look at it the other way too, right? You could give it to someone who has decent attack speed just from base stats, agility-wise, or you can even look at it from someone that maybe has a little bit lower of an attack speed skill. This is just an example of how you might connect a dot with a skill and then also attaching it to an immortal. Now let's take a look at a B tier skill. So an example of like a B tier skill that I think would be applied would be something like, okay. So for this would be something like assist. So, and again, I'm gonna give an example as, let me see where I'm looking at, 39. So assist is here. It says every 10 seconds after battle starts, assist one random back row allied troop by transferring all of their received damage to you and reduces the damage you receive by 7.5%. So you could put this skill on someone like Charles, for example. Now, why do I say that? One, because when Charles procs a skill, right, he's pretty much, and yes, this is a pay to win um, or a spender type immortal that you would have to unlock. Um, and right, you can even make the argument for putting it on someone like Gaius um, as an example. And right, the reason why right you would you would proc the skill. Now keep in mind it is different because based off that is passive. But someone like Gaius right, because he puts a shield up for his absorption rate on your front row troops. So that's him and someone else. If you look at Charles, which let me scroll down here to give you an example there. Where's my boy Charles? Did I miss him? Here we go. So Charles, right, with Terra Shield, creates a shield for all units that absorbs damage. Your shield absorption will increase an additional 150% for six seconds, right? So it increases your shield absorption by an additional amount. So again, you could put something like that, that type of a skill on someone like Charles, and you would find that uh, the benefit for it would still be really useful. And so, uh, again, that would be an example of something you might run for a, a B-type skill, right? Again, where it says every 10 seconds after the battle, it brings in and then it transfers all of it. Now, the, again, the reason I put that there, because it's every 10 seconds, right? So you really have to spread it out. And it also gives you more of a chance, because it happens every 10 seconds, that it falls more in line with when a skill may proc, rather than if this was to happen, like, let's say, every four seconds or every six seconds. So it gives you a little bit more of time. And it also lasts six seconds. You have a little bit more of a window in case maybe it activates, but the shield hasn't proc yet. So you still have some time there. Another example, as I sip some luscious Og1 H2O, would be something like Absorb. This is another skill that I kind of put more in like a B rank. Now, Absorb you're going to find at level 27. So let's take a look at Absorb. Grants lifesteal buff during battle. So when you deal normal attacks, there is a 55% chance of restoring HP, uh, HP equal to 30% of the damage dealt. The reason I put this as a B, now I, I'm a big fan of lifesteal type skills. The reason I have this as a B, even though I really like it, is because it's singular focused, right? It's not an AOE skill, um, even though it is passive, and I like that. Because, again, you could put this on someone even like Charles, or sorry, like Alex, right? You could put the attack speed skill um, on Alex along with his absorb skill on Alex, right? And now you're creating this, suit, this high damage, high attack speed, lifesteal, like sustain type character, and that could be something that works again that's why i have absorbed there in my in my b rank now next let's talk about something like a c tier that i would put a little bit lower again i still like the skill but for obvious reasons i have it a little bit lower than that so something like uh will of angels so let's go up to 31 so will of angels is here when you receive damage there's a seven percent chance of restoring hp to your unit that lost the most troops so, with this, it, it again, there's only a 7% chance of it proccing. That's extremely low. That's probably the main reason why I would put something like this in a C tier. Now, the part that I find interesting about this type of a skill, which is that it says chance of restoring HP to your unit that has lost the, uh, lost the most troops power, 
right? This means that it can apply to any unit out of the four that you have on the field, but the chance of it proccing is extremely low, um, right? And that's an example of why I would put a skill like this a little bit lower on the rank. Another example of one is that you look at something like Demon Body. So Demon Body you'll find at 32, and this is something, right, again, it's an, it's an elite skill. It's a purple skill. But it says when you receive damage, again, there's a 7% chance of inflicting physical damage from 90 to 300% to a random enemy troop and heavily wounding them so they cannot heal. Now, yeah, the skill sounds great, but there's only a 7% chance of it proccing, right? So I like to try and put my, my stock in skills that either have just constant passives that are 100% guaranteed or ones that have at least a 50% chance to proc throughout a battle and not just for like the first 12 to 18 seconds, which you'll notice some skills do have more so than I would others that don't. So look, guys, that's pretty much my breakdown for, for Tower of Knowledge, just kind of going over a couple skill examples. Again, the main part here is read the skills, take time to understand the skills and really see what has value and what doesn't. And you may find that some skills have more value on certain immortals than others do, even though some skills could be really good universally, but they may not just be the best skill for that specific immortal. That's why it's really important to, one, read the skills, and then also read the skills of your immortals. And if you take it a step further, read the skills of all of the immortals in your composition so you can get a good understanding of the type of comp that you would run. I will give you one brief example here, is if you look at like a fire team, they're a little bit more crit and damage heavy. You may consider running crit type skills and possibly attack speed type skills on these, ki on these types of immortals. One, because the more attacks you do, the higher chances you have of critting. And then two, if you add crit, you'll have a higher chance of crit hitting once again. So that's just an example of how you would look at a, at a type of comp, but you have to look at what the skills are and then try and pick apart the common denominators, right? So that would be my, my last kind of pro tip for the day. That's it for me. I hope you all enjoyed this Tower of Knowledge introduction breakdown and also where you can go and find all of the Tower of Knowledge skills written out, my recommendations on kind of my V1 tier list that I've put out, which is on the Tower of Knowledge spreadsheet. Again, friendly reminder, you can find a link to that in the description below. If y'all want to come and check out our Discord where we talk about Infinity Kingdom, there will be a link for that in the pinned comments at the top below. And yeah, that's it for me. Man, I can't wait to start doing some more deep dives into Tower of Knowledge and really break down some more theory crafting. Man, it's an exciting time for Batman. All right, guys, that's it for me. And girls, because as usual, we're gender neutral. I will catch y'all later.